Hi, my name is Glenn Weinreb, and today we're going to explore how a new R&D laboratory could potentially tackle the climate problem. Our planet's temperature is currently accelerating upward. This suggests past R&D efforts have been insufficient. So what might we do differently? We'll look at that. But first, let's do a quick review of typical methods for handling R&D. Universities typically focus on professor-sized projects, while companies typically focus on projects that provide a return on investment within a reasonable amount of time. But there's another type that is often overlooked. This is what Bill Gates refers to as big R&D. These are large-scale projects that exceed the capabilities of a university or a company. Examples include the Manhattan Project during World War II and the U.S. program that landed a man on the moon. Each started with a goal, broke the problem down into parts, and pushed forward. And each involved multiple teams and multiple organizations. In theory, the same could be done with climate. More specifically, a new laboratory could do R&D to the extent required to prevent runaway climate change. To achieve this objective, the lab could drive down the cost of 24-7 green energy to below that of fossil fuel and determine how to reflect sunlight at reasonable cost and without harm. Big R&D is often avoided by companies due to excessive risk. It is often avoided by universities due to a reliance on professor-sized projects. And it is often avoided by governments unless they are under extreme pressure. In theory, these barriers can be overcome with a unique organizational structure that coordinates multiple foundations, universities, and funding sources. Yet how might this be organized? And what would it take to get it started? Let's take a closer look. Big R&D might sound expensive, however, feasibility can often be verified with relatively little money. More specifically, one typically spends small money before medium money, and medium money before big money, and only advances if technically and economically feasible. Small typically involves developing rough designs, building cost models, and writing proposals. This is sometimes referred to as phase one R&D. Medium typically entails detailed engineering and prototype development, while big typically involves setting up factories and supporting large volumes. There are two main sources of R&D funding, climate money and investment money. Climate money hopes to save the planet from climate change whereas investment money hopes to make more money. Each of these has constraints. For example, investment money avoids projects that are too complex, too risky, or lack consumer demand. While climate money often requires results to be shared openly to maximize climate benefit for a dollar spent. Open sharing brings real advantages. It maximizes use of developed technology, it encourages peer review. It promotes development of interconnection standards. It reduces exaggerated claims. And it lessens dependency on researchers and institutions. Typical sources of climate money include governments, foundations, and individual donors. Well, investment money typically comes from companies and investment funds. Companies and universities often prioritize their own financial interests over climate interests. For example, they often avoid sharing information since it can interfere with securing patents, developing proprietary products, and attracting further investment. The public is tired of hearing about climate change. For the most part, they have three 
simple questions. One, how much does it cost to fix this? Two, who fixes this? And three, what are they going to do about it? In theory, a business plan for a new lab can help answer these questions. For this reason, we encourage foundations, governments, and universities to task several people with writing an R&D plan that prevents runaway climate change. For an example of this, click on the link in the description below. Okay, so why is it helpful for existing organizations to write this kind of plan? We can estimate the cost of decarbonization and climate harm and see it's in the range of trillions of dollars. Therefore, in theory, it's reasonable to spend additional billions on R&D to save trillions. If additional R&D costs $100 billion over 10 years, for example, and $500,000 was spent on each technical person annually, then this would support 20,000 scientists and engineers. This goes beyond what one organization could handle. Therefore, money would need to flow towards many organizations. And writing a plan helps them get a sense of what is needed and how to attract money. The idea of 20,000 people might seem overwhelming, but keep in mind one can get started developing rough designs, doing cost modeling, and writing proposals for small money. The climate problem is difficult to discuss for several reasons. One, it's upsetting. Two, it's difficult to comprehend significant changes to our planet. And three, many people still believe decarbonization is viable, in part due to decarbonization news reports that appear almost daily. Also, a path forward does exist, and in theory, a lab could help explain this to the public. This YouTube channel is an example of how this might be done. As evidence of a changing planet increases, support for reflecting sunlight and decarbonization also increases. However, if and when support becomes sufficient, it's not clear we'll have enough time to act at the scale needed to avoid climate tipping points. In other words, we might have a timing problem. Also, if and when support is sufficient, it's not clear that people with money know what to do with it. For example, the last U.S. administration spent hundreds of billions of dollars on climate, yet these efforts had little impact on tipping points. Okay, so how might we spend money differently? Well, with reflecting sunlight, we can put lots of money in the hands of top climate people. And with decarbonization, we can focus on large R&D initiatives that involve known technologies and favorable cost models. We'll discuss this further in later videos. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to you all real soon.